Magical Girl Anime Defined on Merriam-Webster's dictionary as a subgenre of anime for the girlies, they are focused on, quote, young girls who possess magical abilities, which they typically use through an ideal alter ego into which they can transform. Quoted from Wikipedia. Don't worry, okay? The works cited page will be at the end of this f***ing paper, okay, professor? Famous examples include Sailor Moon, Cardcaptor Sakura, Pretty Cure, and Puedamagi Madoka Magica. All of these shows are super fun and innocent and family-friendly and not the Pressing whatsoever. Everything's good. <laughs> However, there's one legendary magical girl anime that exists in the world that one of my viewers very passionately recommended to me. Known as one of, if not the worst magical girl anime ever made. My whole shoujo? Naria Girls. My whole shoujo Naria Girls has a score of 3.87 out of 10 on my anime list and a 2.1 out of 10 on IMDb. But don't let these scores fool you. This anime is a masterpiece, okay? A silent voice wishes it could be as incredible and as heart wrenching as my whole shoujo Naria Girls. Naria Girls? Your name? More like you're lame, am I right, girlies? <laughs> This anime is a masterpiece, a masterpiece, a masterpiece, 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 masterpiece. Hello everybody, my name is Leo Hashi and today I decided to watch the worst rated magical girl anime so that you don't have to. Now full transparency here, okay, the only magical girl anime I've ever seen is Madoka Magica. Basically, I know everything there is to know about magical girl animes, okay? But before I talk about this any further, there's something I need to fix really quickly, okay? Just give me one second. Alright. Moon Prison Power! Make up! <laughs> now we can talk about Naria Girls, okay? Um, excuse me, my eyes are up here, okay? You gotta stop looking. Bro. I know it's a little tight on me, okay? I swear, I'm in my diet era right now. The only way I can truly describe this anime to you is that throughout the entire runtime, I thought I was having the most insane fever dream that I've ever had in my entire life. Like, I couldn't believe that this was an actual anime that exists in our universe. It looks, it sounds, and feels like, like this home made YouTube skit that a few VTubers decided to create. Before I move on though, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to obliterate that like button, subscribe for more anime and Japan related content. I also have a Ko-Fi account for anyone who'd be willing to help me out. As always, all donations will be used to improve the quality and output of my videos. It's sort of like a tip jar. Obviously, as usual, please only donate if you are able to. Either way, I'm very glad you're here. That being said, let's move on to more magical girls, shall we? Now I'm going to explain like the basic premise of this show. After the Ice Queen brings eternal winter to the land of Nariadia? What the f- The only hope to restore balance is to gather human warriors and give them the power of Naria crystals. For this reason, Animaru, which is like this ugly little companion monster thing that accompanies our main characters, chooses the middle schoolers Urara, Inaho, and Hanabi as warriors. I think they're missing one person though. Me. I can be the best magical girl in the world if they wanted me to. Anyway, so far it seems like a pretty basic run-of-the-mill magical girl show, but then you watch it and it's like, no, this is nothing like any other magical girl show, okay? This is the greatest magical girl show to ever exist in the universe. <laughs> Here are the main characters. We got Urara, the pink-haired girl, who is the main protagonist of this anime. She's also the narrator, and we see this story from her perspective and point of view. Her mom, unfortunately, abandoned her, leaving her to live with her grandma and later with her dad. Hanabi, the blue girl, is this sort of quirky, like airheaded doofus type character, and she's voiced by Aoi Koga, who's also known for characters such as Kaguya from Kaguya-sama and Paimon. <laughs> then we have Inaho, the purple girl, and this is how Urara introduces her to us. <laughs> <laughs> Those are her words, okay? Not mine. Yo, she has two personalities and they're both humongous! <laughs> Guys, 
I'm fine, okay? I'm fine. Everything's fine. So the three one day meet Animaru and become the Naria girls. They're powered by Naria energy, which can be collected through making other people happy. They decide to become idols at some point so that they could make more people happy and collect even more Naria energy so that they can save the land of Nariandia. Naria da 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 But throughout the course of this series, they're attacked by the Ice Queen's minions who all try to screw our three protagonists over by using the Ice Mirror. Basically, this Ice Mirror forces them into acting out the most unnecessarily specific and weird skits that just turn the show into an absolute storm in the best way possible. <laughs> now first, let me address the magical elephant in the room. This anime isn't really animated, as you can see. It's a mixture of like a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation, slideshow, and VTuber rigs. None of it's like actually an animation like your typical anime, but you know, it's fine, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Please don't tell me it's another slideshow. No, don't. When I first started to watch this show and it looked like it was going to be a slideshow, I literally had war flashbacks to one of my least favorite animes of all time, Lady Spo, which is still one of the most awful garbage pieces of shit, terrible fucking horrible piece of shit, garbage slideshow that should never have been created in the first place. So yeah, I was really terrified at first to watch this show, but then it devolved even more so than Lady Spo because the anime switched over from a slideshow into three VTuber models just fooling around and having like the most head-ass conversations while like moving around like NPCs. Look, if this anime was something to be taken seriously, then I probably would have complained about the animation style or lack thereof. But honestly, there's something about this extremely Dollar Tree style of this show that just really adds to the charm of the whole thing for me. Most of the episodes are pretty much the same structure. Urara narrates the beginning of the episode, introducing herself and what happened in the last episode, as well as their objective for this episode. <laughs> Usually, a new character is introduced to the three protagonists that's going to help them achieve this objective for the episode. However, to the surprise of absolutely no one on this planet except I guess our three main characters, these other characters are always just the Ice Queen's minions disguising themselves as humans. There's usually a scene where our three main characters goof around. <laughs> and then like a sort of talking head interview of the bad guy of the week where they talk about the most whatever the f bullshit. I don't I don't even know. <laughs> then the bad guy is like <laughs> you fools I'll get you and then they take out their magical evil ice mirrors or whatever that has the ability to make people act out ridiculous skits or something the three girls are then taken over by the mirror's magic and they all start acting like head asses but then Animaru is like, guys, it's the bad guys attack. Transform into the Naria girls while you describe something super specific and unrelated to the show in any way. And then we watch the three girls transform while they say some kind of weird monologue. What is this? <laughs> 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 and 
and then they literally beat the bad guy in one frame. Then everything is resolved and the episode ends. Did um, did, did you get all that? Of course, there's a uh, sort of a story, I guess. But honestly, yeah. the story really doesn't matter for Jack <laughs> in this anime. The important part is all the headassery that happens in the show. I'll just do like a quick rundown of the show's story though, just to get you up to speed. Episode one, they become magical girls. Wow, we. What? Episode 2, they find confidence in being magical girls and they conquer a rift in their friendship. Episode 3, they become idols to get more happiness power to power their Naria crystals. Episode 4, there's a hot transfer student that the three girls can't stop thinking about, but it turns out that he was one of the Ice Queen's minions. <laughs> Episode 5, the three try to make a commercial but are screwed over by a minion. Not like that <laughs> minions, like the Ice Queen's minions, you, you know what I mean. Episode 6, Urara's grandmother dies and the show takes a very sudden and super depressing turn for like two minutes. Episode 7, a fun summer vacation at Inaho's villa, except the maid turns out to be the fucking minion. Episode 8, another alleged magical girl appears and asks the three if she can join them, but it turns out she's the monster. So what if I'm the monster? Guys, I know that meme is old as fuck, okay? But it's still funny to me, okay? So whatever, okay? Dab the haters away! Episode 9. These recent events cause Urara to question her entire life. Is she really needed by anyone? What is the point of life? And then one of the Ice Queen's minions sits down next to her and is like, Stop, I'm the Ice Queen's minion. And then they start talking about how depressing life is together. It's just crazy. The minion talks about how he wants to be needed by someone to be given a purpose in this depressing, dark life. And Urara is like, yeah, same, bro. And then as Urara looks back at her life, she remembers all of the good memories that she had with her friends. And she suddenly becomes very happy once again. Episode 10. They perform at the Tokyo Dome to collect a bunch of Naria energy, but the energy is stolen by a bad guy to power the Winter Queen. Episode 11. Urara looks into pictures of her memories with her grandma and asks her dad why their mom left. And her dad keeps making excuses and like keeping secrets. It's later revealed by the Ice Queen's most powerful right hand minion that the Ice Queen is actually Urara's mom. Believing that her mom hates her, Urara becomes very upset and summons a bunch of Naria energy and they're able to defeat the bad guy. Afterwards, her dad reveals that Urara was actually a stillborn baby and her mom wished for her to live. So she wished to the Naria or whatever to make her come back to life. However, this was not without price as she had been taken over and she became the Ice Queen as a result, losing any consciousness and memories of her past human life. Pause. What the actual fuck? <laughs> First, I was watching these three goofy goobers be like the most head-ass people on the planet. And then the next moment, we're finding out that Urara was, Urara was a stillborn baby? And her mom sacrificed herself so that Urara could have a life? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Episode 12 is the final confrontation. Except when they're being attacked by a bunch of the Snow Queen's minions, they just start talking about bras. And then the crowd keeps cheering in the background. <laughs> it's so cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fucking minions like screaming in the background. <laughs> anyway, the other two girls sacrifice themselves so that Urara can go confront her mother, and she wins, and her mother dies. And in the end, Urara makes a wish to the Naria to get rid of everything in the first place so that her mother would never actually make the wish in the first place. But as a result, Urara disappears from existence. However, later on it's revealed that Urara's parents had a son, and he was growing as if he was living for two people, and they wonder why. Now I wonder where they got this ending from. Look, as depressing as this ending is, it's also, you know, not really an original ending. So yeah, maybe, okay, maybe, just maybe, some parts of this ending made me feel just a little bit emotional, okay? Just a little bit emotional. <laughs> Why am I feeling sad right now? Why am I getting emotional? But that's only because they ripped off another show's ending, and that show's ending actually made me cry the ugliest tears I cried in a while, okay? It was because that show was good, and not because Naria Girls was any good, okay? Guys, okay? I hope you've been able to keep up so far with what's going on in not just this anime, but in this fucking video too. Even if you're confused, don't worry, because I'm literally making the video on this show, and I'm just as confused as you are. This anime feels like an anomaly, like something 
that just shouldn't exist. It goes against the laws of nature. Now let me tell you about some of my favorite bits from this anime. There's an absolutely legendary talking head interview with the bad guy of the week where they talk about this. <laughs> That's so real. I will definitely be taking inspiration from this. Every time I go out to eat with friends, I'm just gonna loudly and proudly declare that I'm going to shove a broccoli up one of their asses. And they have to respond, I need a shot! Or else I'll legitimately shove an entire flower of broccoli up their ass. There's this one skit where the bad guy turns them into a magical girl who's anxious to fight the enemy that's right in front of them, a magical girl who starts to worry about things at the worst possible time, and a perverted magical girl who's getting excited to realize that he's actually a boy. There's also an absolutely amazing performance by Hanabi, where she sings an Enka song she wrote called Stop Illegal Parking. This song just hit me right in the feels right here, right in the, you know, right in my right tank. Right tank? Is that where my heart is? No, it's my left tank. Oh my god. By the way, Enka is a type of Japanese song that resembles like traditional Japanese music. There's also this bit where Urara pretends to be a plant. <laughs> I just couldn't. It just destroyed me. The level of harassery here was just so incredible. Or this one amazing haiku by Hanako. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> or this other amazing haiku by Hanako. <laughs> and finally, this incredible rap performance by Hanako. <laughs> I can't believe this is like a real anime. It really doesn't feel like one. Man, I genuinely don't think I have any brain cells left anymore. All I have are my left and my right. That's all I need in my life, isn't it? So yeah, that's basically the entirety of my whole shoujo Naria Girls. It's an absolute mess of a storm that left me absolutely destroyed inside because of how funny I thought it was. Now here's the thing. The reviews and scores all absolutely obliterate this show, okay? But that's only if you go into this show with like the mindset of oh this is going to be extremely deep and meaningful and i'll be taking away important lessons about friendships with the girl is then you're going to be extremely disappointed however if you go into this with the mindset like i did which is just having a case of terminal brain rot so bad to the point where any thought i have just erodes away into dust the moment it actually appears in my subconscious only then you might be able to enjoy this anime for what it is i also saw
saw that a premise of this anime was that three girls decide to make an anime and they decide to make it into a magical girl anime. I don't know if the events of this show are canon or if it's just like these characters are making this anime and then we're like, I, I don't know what the f*** is going on. I also saw on Wikipedia that like this anime is supposed to be some like user generated or I don't know what it's called, but something, you know, I'll put it here. I have no idea what the f*** it means. I just thought it was interesting to know. I don't even f*** know anymore. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go save some people now to generate more Naria energy so that I can help save the land of Naria di da di da di da 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 Anyway, yeah, that was the worst rated magical girl anime, my whole shoujo Naria girls. It would be an absolute understatement to say that this show completely and absolutely changed my life. It inspired me to change my career path to magical girl. Sorry guys, I think I'm done with YouTube now. I'm now going to be the world's first real life magical girl and no one can stop me, okay? 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 <laughs>